For those who have followed the coverage of the war in Syria, you may have noticed that amongst the reports of the use of chemical weapons, siege tactics or indiscriminate targeting, one of the most controversial incidents was the destruction of the ancient ruins of Palmyra. The protection of cultural objects like the ruins of Palmyra has long been a concern of Eichel. Even if there are disagreements on the precise definition of those objects, essentially they include an immovable or immovable property of great importance to the cultural heritage of peoples, whether of a secular or religious nature. The definition of cultural objects also includes refugees or buildings whose purpose is to preserve or exhibit movable cultural property, such as museums or large libraries, and finally, centers containing a large amount of cultural property, precisely such as the site of Palmyra in Syria. In order to be better identified, they can be marked by a specific emblem. But the absence of such an emblem does not mean they are uh, no longer a cultural property and do not have the protection afforded to that object. In what ways are cultural objects protected under IHL? It is clear that the protection offered to cultural object includes protection against attacks. However, this immunity may be waived insofar as the cultural object can be qualified as a military objective. It is true that it is not expressly provided in all the treaties affording a general protection to cultural objects. However, these treaties must be read in line with the existing customary distinction between civilian objects and military objectives and the definition of such objectives. As any cultural object is a civilian object, it will accordingly lose its protection if it satisfies the two general conditions for targeting a military objective. In other words, a cultural object can be targeted if it makes an effective contribution to the military capacity of one belligerent, and its destruction offers the other belligerent a definite advantage. This has been made explicit in the most recent text on the matter. The Statute of the International Criminal Court qualifies attacks against cultural objects as a war crime, provided they are not military objectives. However, this must be combined with the fact that the use of cultural objects for military purposes is viewed under some treaties and by some jurisdictions as the only reason for waiving its immunity against attacks. It is quite clear under the 1907 Hague Regulations whose Article 27 obliges states to spare, as far as possible, cultural objects, provided they are not being used at the time for military purposes. This may also be inferred from declarations made by state with respect to the two 1977 additional protocols, according to which those states retain the right to target cultural objects in case they are used illegally for military purposes. More generally, the ICTY stated, in light of both the Hague regulations and the two additional protocols, that under customary international law, the crime resulting from the destruction of cultural property was established, provided that such a property was not used for military purposes at the time when the acts of hostility directed against these objects took place. It expressly excluded the location of a cultural property as a potential justification for the loss of protection of that property against attacks. If we combine such a view with the accepted assumption that cultural objects lose their protection when they are transformed into military objectives, this means that they, be, they could become such objectives only on the basis of their use 
In other words, while for ordinary civilian objects there are four ways in which that object may contribute to the military action of the enemy, through its nature, location, purpose and use, cultural objects can only be targeted if they are being used by the enemy military. This is precisely the additional protection afforded to cultural objects. While several IHL treaties suggest such an additional protection for cultural objects, others seem to adopt the broader consumption used in relation to general civilian objects. According to the 1954 Convention, immunity can be waived in the general circumstance of imperative military necessity, without giving any further definition of that concept. This creates the impression that cultural property, under that convention, will lose their immunity like any usual civilian object, when they become military objective, either by nature, purpose, use or location, unless we consider the additional protection afforded to cultural property to have become customary law and therefore applicable even to states party to the 1954 Convention. Some doubt also exists with respect to the legal regime under the second protocol to that Convention, as it provides that the immunity of cultural property is waived when that cultural property has by its function been made into a military objective. By its function is not a straightforward expression and could be interpreted more broadly than by its use. Canada, for example, made a broad interpretation of this expression by considering that the cultural property can be made into a military objective and lose its immunity against attacks because not only of its use, but also its nature, location or purpose. In any case, both under the 1954 Convention and its Second Protocol, the cultural property must have been transformed into a military objective. The protection of cultural objects under the General Protection Regime extends, extends beyond the protections against attacks. The protections against attacks is only one part of a more general obligation to respect cultural objects. The legal regime protecting cultural objects also forbids the use of those objects for military purposes and any act of hostility against them, even if that act does not amount to an attack, including, for example, demolishing cultural objects, as it is clearly the case in Palmyra with the Islamic State. Again, concerning these two prohibitions, and in particular, the conditions for waiving them, we must distinguish between the 1954 Convention legal regime and that established under the two 1977 additional protocols. Under the Convention regime, the prohibition to use cultural property may be waived when there is no other feasible method for obtaining a similar military advantage. No waiver is available under the two additional protocols. Concerning the prohibition to make a cultural property the object of any act of hostility, including demolition, waiver of that prohibition is only possible under the 1954 Convention regime, in case of imperative military necessity, which is of course not the case in Palmyra. Again, this waiver is not available under the two additional protocols. Finally, there is a customary obligation applicable to any cultural property irrespective of the particular treaty obligations of the belligerent in question. The obligation to safeguard that property. That obligation means that belligerents must also adopt positive measures already in peacetime to prevent any damage to cultural property in the event of an armed conflict 
such as the planning of emergency measures for protections against fire or structural collapse.